for those of you, many of you on TikTok, that only know me on TikTok as Evangelist Mike Dial, I'm also on lots of other social media. And sometimes the messages are longer and in more depth and in detail. For instance, you can find me on YouTube, YouTube, at Evangelist Mike Dial. Capitalize the E for Evangelist, the M for Mike, the D for Dial. YouTube at Evangelist Mike Dial. You can watch me on your TV. On YouTube TV, just tell your box, tell your remote, at Evangelist Mike Dial, Evangelist Mike Dial. I'm on Twitter. God help me. <laughs> I'm on Twitter. I have two accounts, not one, but two accounts on Twitter. One is same as my uh, TikTok. It's Evangelist M Dial, Evangelist M Dial on Twitter. The other is Pastor Mike Dial on Twitter. Now, Twitter's a jungle, I'm telling you, but I, I'm there to preach the gospel. And I'm also on Instagram. I'm on Instagram, and it's same as same as TikTok, at Evangelist Mike Dial, all lowercase, at Evangelist Mike Dial. Watch my reels there. Um, I'm, I'm on uh, Facebook. We've been doing really good lately. I've been getting really tens of thousands of views, adding up to hundreds of thousands total on Facebook reels. Praise God. Now, on Facebook, it's... You can go at Evangelist Mike Dial, but I really I use my first and middle name, so it's at or hashtag Michael Wayne, Michael Wayne on Facebook, and I could use your support and help everywhere. And those of you that know me, you know that uh, I do not ever actually ask for money. Praise God, I'm a pro bono. I don't even pay myself a salary. This is a gift. I. I ask you to follow me as I follow Christ, not cash. But we do accept offerings, donations, and contributions. We need them for the work of evangelism. You can do it through Venmo at Evangelist Mike Dial. The best way is PayPal. PayPal.me slash Mike Dial. Very simple. PayPal.me slash Mike Dial. We'd love to have your offerings, donations, contributions. It doesn't go for anything but to win souls and lastly before we get started in the word today pastors uh, bishops overseers shepherds of local churches I, I want to come and preach for you the message I preach is very controversial it turns a lot of people away I get more disinvites <laughs> and uninvites than invites these days praise God a lot of persecution but I want to come bless your people and you can schedule me to come postage paid free of charge for a camp meeting convention conference revival special speaker sunday morning wednesday night all you have to do is text or call 24 7 and the number is 703-405-1942 703-405-1942 praise god so without any further ado let's get into the word of god today in part three and i hope you've been here for part one and part two if not follow me and catch up in my archives it's very simple Follow me and catch up in my archives. Now, a lot of y'all say, what happened, Brother Mike? You're not swinging from the chandeliers. You're not shouting and screaming and rolling on the floor. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not only a preacher, I'm a, I'm a teacher. And uh, a lot of people call me Professor Mike. And I can calm down. A lot of y'all whisper, Brother Mike, use your little voice. Well, you're going to get your wish today. Now, we're going we're gonna to keep preaching. We're, <laughs> we're going to go back to the studio. But it's a beautiful day out here in Washington, D.C. We're about... A mile from the Pentagon that way, we're about two miles from the White House, right over the Potomac River that way, about three and a half miles to the Capitol building and the Supreme Court. So we're right in the middle of everything in the capital of the United States. We are calling America to repentance. That's why I go to the White House. That's why I go to the Supreme Court. That's why I go to all these embassies. That's why I go to Capitol Hill. That's why I go to New York. That's why we're setting out on a 28-city tour soon to preach the gospel and call America to repent in every major city in the United States that we've not been to before June 1st of 2023. Praise God. So we have purpose in what we're doing. And, and I want to just pick up right where we left off. Open your Bible today to Ephesians chapter 2. The book of the Apostle Paul, the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians. And you know what God says as we begin today? God says, you've got mail. Remember that movie with Tom Hanks? You've got mail. You've got mail. You've got mail. Well, look, God says you've got mail. And it's Philippians. 
Glory to God. It's Colossians. It's Corinthians. It's Ephesians. These epistles that God wrote to you. Have you read it? Have you opened your mailbox? Have you read your email from Elohim? Have you read your email from El Shaddai? Philippians, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, worldly, according, listen, to the prince of the power of the air, the airwaves, the prince of of the power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience boy it's quiet and now go over to chapter 3 and the 12th verse Ephesians chapter 3 and the 10th verse excuse me to the intent that now under the principalities and the powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. And finally, before we pray and get started, chapter 6 and verse 12. For we wrestle not. How many of you know you're in a fight? Paul said to Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Jude says, earnestly contend for the faith once delivered for the saints. But you got to know who your enemy is. The problem with the church today, we're fighting the wrong enemy on the wrong battlefield with the wrong weapons. Amen. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, here we go again, principalities, the prince of the power of the air, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to spend time in your precious, inspired, infallible, holy written work. God, we pray the Holy Ghost, the teacher would come and lead us and guide us into all truth. God, make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And I'm praying, oh God, that you convict the people of sin, righteousness, and judgment and draw them to the bleeding side of Calvary. And God, will give you all the praise, glory, and honor for everything said, done, and wrought, and accomplished today. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Pour out thy spirit upon us. Oh God, give us a move of God. Give us a revival. Give us a stirring in the mulberry bush. Give us the rushing mighty wind. Give us the power of Pentecost. We love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Boy, I felt that. If you didn't feel that, your feeler's broken. Today, you know, we're in a battle. We're in a war. And we're, we're battling the prince of the power of the air and wireless and TV and cable and communications and imaginations and Comcast and Cox. And, and Satan is indeed the prince of the power of the air. And he uses TV, idle phones, tele telecommunications, internet, sites, apps. And frankly, he's winning the war. There's very few serving God. The devil is, pardon my language, the devil is kicking butt. We're going to change that. Hallelujah. We're going to have a move of God. We're going to have a revival. But it's going to take repentance. Today, most of y'all love your electronic tablets. Your texting. Your tweeting. Your typing. Your transmitting of your transgressions via telecommunications and tech. You love all that. But your soul, your spiritual life, is a train wreck. And your spirit is a shipwreck. Why? Because you hate God's two tablets of stone written by the finger of God. You love what I just talked about. You love the prince of the power of the air and all his demon devil devices. You love his wireless airwaves. You love playing video games and playing videos and, and watching TV and being entertained, but you hate true evangelists like me. That's why I'm the most blocked, ghosted, unfriended, persecuted, defrocked, mocked, attacked, lampooned, and ridiculed preacher in the United States right now. Hello, how you doing? They don't like the fact that I preach against all that stuff. They don't like the fact that I take on Satan and your vain 
imaginations. Flip your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. And I could talk literally until Jesus comes on this, this one verse. But we're just going to hit the high notes today and, and, and you can dig later. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and starting in verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare, and we are in a war. We are in a war, and no man that's in a war should entangle himself with this world. We are in a war. We should take on the armor of God. We are soldiers. This is not tiddlywinks. This is not a game. This is spiritual warfare. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down, to the pulling down, to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, look. At, listen, this is very important, verse 5. Casting down imaginations. I'm going to be preaching soon from Deuteronomy 3, 4, and 5 about graven images, carved images, molten images, electronic images, having no gods before me, having no likeness, no image of anything in heaven above, on the earth, under the earth. But that's not just an Old Testament thing, like I said in our last two sessions together. The moral law, the commands, the first, the second commands, the Ten Commandments are carried into the New Testament. And here he says, casting down imaginations. If you got imaginations and you're looking at images, well, your salvation is a fantasy. Your, your salvation, you have an imaginary salvation. Casting down imagination and every high thing. This is the high places of Baal, the high places of idolatry. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I just want you to meditate on that and think about that and let it sink in. We are too busy today on Comcast and Cox. But you need to get off the cable and get on the cross and get on Christ. You love Comcast. You love Cox. You love the prince of the power of the air, Satan, but you hate the creator of the air by comparison, and you hate preachers like me who yell about the fires of hell. But look, the holy God that I serve created the fires of hell, and the Bible said our God is a consuming fire. That's why Moses saw the fire, the burning bush. Don't tell me to be quiet about hell. Don't tell me to be nice. Don't tell me to shut up. I read your comments and questions, and I ignore it. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to shut up. And every time you tell me to be quiet and shut up, I'm going to preach louder. I'm going to scream louder. Glory to God. And i got more to say about that in a moment. But today, as we begin, you love being called a creator. Mark Zuckerberg, oh, everybody's a creator. Everybody's a creator. Be a creator. You love being called a creator in the demonic, devilish metaverse. And that's what the metaverse is. It's demonic. It's devilish. You love being called and labeled a designer, an engineer, an analyst, or a data miner. Yet you hate, by comparison, the very one who created you out of nothing, who designed you who engineered you and who programmed your human systems to function. And his name is Almighty God. Not Alphabet, not Amazon, not at and not Apple. Almighty God. I want you to flip to Romans chapter 1. Because Romans chapter 1 is very appropriate to what we're dealing with right now. Romans chapter 1 verses 22 to 25 and as your homework assignment and yes professor mike does give homework and there will be a pop quiz and there'll be a final it's called god's final exam hallelujah it's oh, you should be sober right now you should tremble and shake and quake in the fear of god because if you don't shake you're gonna bake there's god's final exam god's giving his two-minute warning to the world I, I, I preached it in new york and 620,000 people saw me preach it from New York Harbor. God's giving his final two-minute warning, and God is giving his last call. Are you ready? You should be serious. And Romans 1 speaks to that. So read the whole chapter as your homework. Verse 18, the wrath of God 
Joel Osteen won't say the wrath of God or hell or judgment, but I do. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Now go down to verse 22, and this is where so many professors and academians and, and uh, smart people and authors and politicians and performers, they profess themselves to be wise. I go to college, I go to, I go to college, and I, I binge drink. You ought to be binging on the Bible college student you ought to be binging on the bible and the blood and the broken body of jesus but you do your drugs you binge drink you hook up you party you play when you should be praying professing to be wise oh i've got this knowledge i've got information i've got data i've got i've got i've got 411 i've got info i've got analytics i've got data i've got intelligence iphone no you don't no you don't professing yourself to be wise they became fools and that's exactly what america is doing right now they think they're educated, but they're not because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. They, they just want to be entertained. They don't want to be evangelized. They profess themselves to be wise, but they're fools. And what does the fool do? And only a fool has no rules. You need to start focusing on your mortality and your morality or the lack thereof if you want to have any chance at immortality because without morality, there's no immortality. Amen. They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore, God gave them up to uncleanness, to the lust of their own heart, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Listen, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who's blessed forever. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. The women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. The men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one to another. Listen to me. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Somebody said, Brother Mike, what do you think about AIDS, HIV? I will let Romans 1, verse 27, answer that question so I can stay within the community standards of TikTok, which I respect and I abide by. How do you like that answer? Oh, I answered it. Read verse 27 a hundred times. Same thing with COVID. That's why millions and millions and millions and millions died of COVID. God has had it up to here. God is sick and tired of your sin. God is mad as, well, he made it, so I can say it. It's not a curse word. God is mad as hell, and he's not going to take it anymore. Amen. You are not a creator. You are a creation. And if you worship people, worship American idol, what a you should not have an idol. You should not look up to an athlete or an actor or an activist or an authority. Say, he's my idol. I idolize them. That is blasphemous sin. That will lead you to hell. Don't ever let those words come out of your mouth. Don't ever let that evil communication, that corrupt communication, which corrupts good morals, come out of your mouth. Don't let me ever hear you say that. And don't let God ever hear you say that. Your fake, false gods are what I call the idols of the whoring 20s. It is said of the 1920s, they were the roaring 20s. Well, the 2020s are the whoring 20s. Somebody said the other day, the new generation is called Generation Z. And I said, that's aptly named because it's the last generation. The generation that sees these things, Jesus said, will not pass away till all things be fulfilled. Praise God. But soon Generation Z is going to feel his flames. Turn your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 to 8, and I could preach an entire series until Jesus comes on this text, but I'm just going to give it the uh, uh, the Cliff Notes version. Pop quiz will come later. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also in the last days perilous times shall come, but boy, they have. We got pandemics and plagues. We got a war in Ukraine. We got inflation going crazy, interest rates going crazy. Our border is like a sieve. We got gas prices. We got gang violence and, and, and gun violence on the streets. We got school shootings. Perilous times. It's dangerous. And why? Because of sin. 
Sin is the problem. The cross is the cure. Verse 2, men will be lovers of themselves. Instead of loving God and loving their neighbor, they love themselves. They click selfies. Look at the camera. The camera replaces the cross. Nikon replaces kneeling on your knees. Polaroid, pics, replace preaching. It's all, it's all about self. Selfies, click, 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 click. Look how pretty I am. Click, click. Lovers themselves. Masturbating. Instead of loving the master and loving the maker, they're masturbating. Instead of loving God, they're lusting. Instead of listening to preaching, they're watching porn. Come on. These things are sin. Instead of listening to preachers like Mike Dow, they're hooking up and they're having premarital sex. These things will lead you to hell. No other preacher will tell you that because they just love your money. The other preachers, they just want your money. They just want your money. I want your soul. I don't want your silver and gold. I want to save your soul. Lovers of themselves, covetous, covetous. I want this, I want that, I want bigger this, bigger that, bigger job, better job, covetous, more and more stuff, not content but covetous. Boasters like Donald Trump. Look how good I am, look how great I am, look how great I am, pompous, arrogant, boasting. But if you're boasting, you're gonna be roasted. Proud. Pride is a sin. You need to be humble. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, not doing it God's way. God says one man, one woman for life till death, not divorce to his part. But you want to go to divorce court. Well, that's not the will of God. Divorce is not an option. Divorce is a sin. The Bible said God hates divorce. Jesus said what God joined together, let not man put asunder. Natural affection. The man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, here you go, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. It's time for the lovers of God to arise. But instead of loving God, you love pleasure, treasures for pleasure, money, things, money to get sex, pleasure. You want a boat, you want a yacht, you want a big house, pleasures, play it. We need to be lovers of God. And it goes on. Having a form of godliness. Oh, they're religious, but they're not righteous. They go to church, but they don't know Christ. Denying the power there from such turn away. And then in verse 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And boy, in the, in the information superhighway today, in the world of knowledge and tech and all this stuff that we got going on today. Oh, look at the knowledge I have. I have all this knowledge. I got this degree and that degree from this college and that university. That won't do you a hill of beans of good. How many degrees is it in hell? You're boasting about what you know. You're boasting about your data and your analytics and your graphic arts and graphic analysis. You're a web designer. Forget all that and repent. It won't do you any good. Forget everything that you've learned. Unlearn it and find evangelism. Education will only take you to hell. Paul said, Paul, he mocked them in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. He, he mocked the wisdom of the Greeks. He said the true wisdom is the cross, the cross, the cross of Jesus Christ. I better calm down and preach. Praise God. Praise God. Now, let me get back to my theme. Say whatever you want to say about Big Pharma and modern medicine. Go ahead. Vent. But understand this. Do not have a double standard speaking out of both sides of your mouth. I mean, think about it. Methuselah in the Bible. You remember Methuselah? Yeah. Old is Methuselah. Methuselah in the Bible lived 969 years. And he did it without modern meds or modern medicine. And he didn't have Tony Fauci. He didn't have the NIH. He didn't have the CDC. And he didn't have the WHO. Look, have you ever actually read the entire Bible cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, and I mean really read it? Have you? That's a good question. Today, we have what I call the dot-com gospel. Now, fashion your spiritual seatbelts and get ready because we're going to go hot and heavy. We got the dot com gospel, the virtual video gospel. And what it is, is three things. It's complacent CCOM, it's comfort COM, and it's contemporary COM. 
it's compromise, excuse me, it is. Let's go through that again. It's complacency, comfort, and compromise, the dot-com gospel. But it's also a dot-con gospel. It is the God-con. It is the God-con. It is convenient, C-O-N. It is contemporary, C-O-N. But it's a con. It is a convenient con, the God con. And we are a contemporary, condemned, C-O-N, carnal, cursed, casual people without the true Christ and without his very real cross. And sadly, all is lost. So yeah, a lot of people, I read my comments, you may call me mean. You may call me mean. But, I mean, for sure, I'm God's lawyer. So, mock away, but listen, Mahmoud, God's got my back. Hallelujah. I am the Almighty's attorney. I am God's representative. I am Yahweh's spokesman. And I am heaven's ambassador to earth. And I speak for him. I have the Almighty's back, just like Noah, just like Elijah, glory to God, just like Moses and Jeremiah, John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, and Paul did back in the day. So there is that, just say, just letting you know who and what I am. I remember back, <laughs> uh, I used to watch Saturday Night Live back in the day, there was a guy named John Lovett, John Lovett, and he had a bit, and at the end of it, he would say, is that so wrong? Is that so wrong? I serve God. I speak for God. I'm his ambassador. I'm his attorney. I'm his prophet. Is that so wrong? Have I become your enemy for telling you the truth? Is that so wrong? Thank you, John Lovett, for that bit. You know, I think a lot of people when they watch, I'm getting very serious here, so I think we need a little sense of humor. A lot of people, they, they think I'm like, I'm like, instead of the church lady, I'm the church daddy. <laughs> I'm, I'm the church daddy. But it was like, uh, they compare me to the church lady. Remember the church lady? She, she'd talk and she'd say, she'd say, well, isn't that special? Well, isn't that special? And then she'd say, well, who can make you do that? Who can make you do that? Could it be? Could it be? Could it be? Satan? <laughs> but I'm not the church lady and I'm not the church daddy. And, and look, as I conclude today, I, I just want to leave you with this. Look, I read my comments, I read my mail, <laughs> I do, uh, uh, and I want to talk to you, and I want to answer as many of them personally as I can, but I, I can't get to all of them, so I make videos like this, and, and one of the biggest things is, you know, well, Brother Mike, you hurt my feelings, you offend me, you're turning people off to Christ because of your style, and how loud you are, and how controversial you are, look, I make no apologies. I'm not an apologist, I'm an evangelist. I don't worry about hurting your feelings or offending you. I don't worry about turning people off or turning people away from the gospel. I don't worry about damaging your fragile, bruised, vulnerable psyche. It's the least of my concerns or worries. What I do worry about is this. I worry about you losing your eternal soul that's already lost. The old song says, I was lost and undone without God or His Son, but He reached down His hand for me. He had to reach way down for me oh, I was lost and undone without God or His Son but He reached down His hand for me Amen He reached down because we're lost 
were lost. The soul that sinneth it shall die. The wages of sin is death. You are lost. You are lost. You are lost. I'm not making you lost with my preaching. You are already lost. You are totally depraved. You are valueless and you are worthless outside the cross of Jesus Christ. I can't lose what is already lost. That's why Jesus said, the sheep, I've come to seek and save that which is lost. The modern church says the, the lost, the sinners aren't lost anymore. But they are lost. And they have to be converted. And they have to be repent. Your soul is already lost. I can't lose what's already lost. Your soul right now is lost without God. And it's not my fault. It's not my fault as a hellfire and brimstone preacher if you die and go to hell. Look, I'd rather be a hellfire and brimstone preacher than walk around like you stoned, drunk, high, and buzzed all the time. Your sin is what will send you to hell. Not Mike Dial's loud preaching, shouting, or screaming in my style of tough love. That's what it is. I speak the truth in love. I give you tough love. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Sometimes the child needs correction and discipline. I give you tough love. Why? Because I love you. I'm the only one that I know of that'll tell you the truth, that loves you enough to tell you the truth. Now, some of y'all blame God. You don't like God. You blame God. You blame His cross. But that's not what will send you there to hell either, dude. You send yourself, dude. Like some of y'all call me in the comments, dude. I read the comments. You send yourself by being lewd. And yet you call me rude. And you call me a prude. Look, it's your fault, not mine. If you split hell wide open, clutching to your hand-held devices. So don't blame us, me and God, for the flames, flamers. Don't blame the church. Don't blame, oh, there's hypocrites in the church. Don't blame the hypocrites in the church. Don't blame the self-righteous. Blame yourself. Don't be like Eve. Well, the devil made me do it like Flip Wilson. The devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. And, and, and Adam, he blamed Eve, the woman. And they both blame God. No. Don't blame shift. The devil made me do it. No. Flip Wilson, no. Blame yourself. This is on you, bro. My yelling, screaming, and shouting, my style is sending no soul to hell. Turning no one away. Because they're already turned away. They're already shipwrecked. They're already cut off from God. No, it's not sending them to hell, but it can save millions, yea, billions, if they will repent and believe the gospel, believe the message of the cross, make the cross the object of your faith. It's not my fault. Look, as I close, it's not my fault if your mama or your daddy yelled at you or abused you or molested you. It's not my fault. I'm sorry that happened to you. But it's not my fault and it's not God's fault. Your daddy's issues, or your mama's issues, or your genetics, or your DNA, and you really don't want to know. Don't go to Ancestry.com. You don't want to know. All that, forget about all that. They're, they're, they are their issues. They are on him or her. They're not on me. Madonna said, Papa, don't preach. Papa, don't preach. Well, look, Madonna, you got to me too late. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach. Spare me. You got to me way too late. A material, material, a material girl. I'm a material girl in a material world. Look, Madonna, I reject you. I reject you. Materialism and all you stand for. Spare the rod. Spoil the child. Your spiritual destiny is in your own hand. And right now, I'm going to have an altar call. I'm going to give you a chance to make Jesus the Lord of your life. I want you to bow your head and pray right now. Say, dear God in heaven, I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. And I deserve to go to hell. 
and burn forever. But right now, I repent of my sin. I turn from my sin. I confess my sin. I'm sorry for my sin. And I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me, paying the penalty to you. He shed His precious blood. I believe He was buried. And on the third day, He came up out of the grave, resurrected, and He's alive forever. And now, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. I accept you as my personal Savior, and I make you the Lord of my life. Come in today, come in this day. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Jesus, be Lord of my life this moment, of this minute, of this hour, of this day, of this week, of this month, of this year, of this decade, and for the rest of my life and for all eternity. Jesus, be Lord. Amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Follow me for follow-up. It's that simple. Follow me for follow-up. Amen. Follow me for follow-up. And before I go, I want to pray for the sick. The Lord leads me to pray for the sick right now. We don't normally do it in the outside services, but we're going to do it today. If you're sick, diseased, you're bound, addicted, hooked on narcotics or cigarettes or porn, whatever, right now, in Jesus' name, I lay hands on you spiritually right now. In Jesus' name, I anoint you with oil spiritually right now. And God, I pray that you stretch forth the nail-pierced hand of Calvary and heal the sick right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your river flow. There's the river of God. Now just jump in the river of God. Lift your hands. Believe God. Believe, let the doubt and the worry, the anxiety and the fear go. In Jesus' name, I rebuke cancer. I rebuke COVID, heart disease, brain disease, HIV, AIDS, dementia, Alzheimer's, hypertension, every manner of sickness and disease. Go. Be healed. Receive your healing right now. There it is. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if there are spirits of infirmity, spirits of fear, spirits of religion, familiar spirits, demons, devils, evil spirits of all types, I command you to go loose and leave the people in Jesus' name because I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I come against and I rebuke pornography. You have to go. Alcoholism, you have to go. Drug addiction, you have to go. Lust, you have to go. Religion, you have to go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be healed and be free. And I ask it in the name above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Send in your testimony. Send in your testimony. I have loved being with you today. God bless you today. It's been a privilege and an honor to come into your home, your car, your office, wherever you watch me. Stay tuned. I love you. And remember, Jesus is still your answer. Amen and amen.